Hard work is hard. Being broke is hard as well. Because you either sacrifice now or you sacrifice later. What sacrifice do you want? Today we're going to be talking about what it takes to provide. I'm going to talk about what it takes to provide for yourself and to actually just get the, the freedom that you want, the financial freedom, uh, and also to, to get away from the rat race possibly. And I'm also going to talk about what it takes to provide for your family as well. And yesterday I read a quote that hit me really hard. And the quote was, some people will go broke for their kids, but they won't get rich for them. I was like, damn. That one hits hard. And the reason why is because I've coached thousands of parents. And uh, one thing that I noticed with them, actually, there's quite a few things that I noticed with them. But this hits so hard because a lot of parents, I feel, are actually like this. And I'm going to go over the different, you know, the different aspects of this that really hit home with me. There's a couple different aspects. But even if you don't have kids right now, this still is going to help you because we're going to go over some deep psychological things in today's podcast. So there's a couple of reasons why it hit me so hard. Number one, so many people are locked into their job because they fear not being able to provide for their family, right? So they don't get the full financial success they possibly could. And so they're, they're staying broke because they're afraid that if they lost their job or if they weren't able to provide for their family, then, you know, would hit the fan. And so that's the first thing that, that hits home with me. The second thing is that some people love their children so much, they'll spend their last dollar to get them whatever they want. And the third reason why is because people don't realize what their children are missing out on by simply them not living up to their true potential. I'm not talking about your kids living up to your true potential. I'm talking about you living up to your true potential. So we're going to go through every one of these. And here's the thing that I'll say. I've never met a parent that doesn't want their children's life to be better than theirs was. Ever. Not once. You know, parents, the most giving time I ever see somebody in their life is when they're talking about their kids, when they're working with their kids, when they're trying to help their kids in some sort of way. So everybody, first off, the way I want to start, wants their children's lives to be better than them. But one thing that really holds a lot of people back is they think, I want to make a lot of money. And in order to make a lot of money, I'm going to have to put a lot of time into it. And time equals money to them. More money equals more time. More time in my business means less time with my children. And nothing can be further from the truth. Now, for some of you guys, you're like, that's, that's so foreign to me. I don't even, it's not even, I'm not even comprehending that right now. But we'll dive into that as I go through it. It's not true that more money means less time with your children. That's the first hang up. Some of you guys that are parents are out there. I'm completely shifting up the foundation of your life in your, in your mindsets because you think, hold on, but if I want to make more money, I have to have less time with my children. And one of the main reasons why you're not succeeding in what it is that you want to succeed in is because you think that in order to make more money, you're going to spend less time with your kids. And if you spend less time with your kids, you're not going to be able to raise them the way that you want. And so you're like, you know what? I'll make less money because I love my children that much. When in reality, it might be a better thing for you to make more money because that would actually help your children out more. And I'll tell you why. We're going to dive into it. But, but basically what it comes down to is a poverty mindset. I can tell you this because I've worked through my own poverty mindset and still to this day continue to work at this poverty mindset because it took 25, 30 years to build this poverty mindset in my head. So now I'm working to try to unravel it. And uh, time does not equal money. Money does not equal time. I'm going to say that first off. So first thing we're going to dive into is more money does not equal less time with your kids. And if you set up your business, if you want to set up a business or if you have a business and you think, okay, if in order for me to have more money, I need to work more, you can do that if you want. You can set your business up that way or you don't have to. That's completely up to you. More money does not equal more time. You know, if you own a business, more money, if you're smart, means hire more people. Hire more people means more free time or more time to work on the things that you want to. So whether you have children and you start a successful business and it starts to get more successful, you can bring people on to then do more of your work for you, which means more money equals more people, which actually means more free time. That's foreign for a lot of people. I definitely understand that. You know, for me in my business, we have 12 employees in my business. I can literally go and do all of my employees work every single day, but I would have absolutely no time to sleep. Who wants that life? I would be working 24 hours a day, every single day. The point of hiring people and hiring amazing people is so that they come in and help you. They, they're really good at what they do and they have their own 
part of the business that they basically, in their mind, own in your business, which allows you to take time to do what you truly want to do, to whether that's free time with your kids or whether that's, I don't have any kids and I just want to really focus on, you know, for me, I don't have any kids, but what I really want to focus on is just coaching people. You know, I have a bunch of different coaching courses and, and that's what I want to take my time doing or creating content like I'm doing right now, creating a video for YouTube and Facebook and Instagram, which is also going to be a podcast episode. So for me, it's one of two things that I want to spend my time doing and the reason why I hire people, because I want to create content and I want to coach people. If you have kids, maybe you just want to spend more time with your kids. So when your business is more successful, it actually means more time with your kids. And so, you know, I work probably 40, 50 hours on average per week, but I've worked 110 hours before in old businesses and run them into the ground, but I work about 40, 50 hours a week now and our business is doing multiple seven figures because we have incredible people in place that allow that to happen. I hire them because they get to stay in their zone of genius. They're incredible what they do. And then I get to stay in my zone of genius, which is coaching and creating content. And everybody does what they're really good at. So more time or more money does not have to equal more time in your business. The first thing that I wanted to dive into around that is so many people are locked into their job mentally because they fear not being able to provide for their family. I'm gonna let that one sink in because I know a lot of people listening to this are not doing what you truly want to do because you are afraid you won't be able to pay their bills. I, and I get it. I completely understand where you're coming from. I understand that fear. People work jobs that they hate for their families. But who said that has to be that way? Even if you don't start your own business, what if you just had a job that you loved and you still were able to provide for your family? What would that look like? For some people, that idea is so foreign because they've hated their job for so long and they just feel like that's the way that it is. And it's a novel idea and it's, it's super selfless to do something that you hate doing every single day in order to do it for somebody else, to provide for people. But who says that it has to be that way? What if you loved what you did and you still provided for your children? Whether that's your own business or whether that's working for somebody else, what would that look like? Is that a paradigm shift for you? Is that hard for you to even accept because you've always thought that you have to hate your job? Maybe you saw your parents hate their job in order to provide for you. And so now you're working a job that you hate in order to provide for your children. What would it look like for you to work a job that you absolutely love? What would that look like? Let's say you make $60,000 a year now working a job that you hate. What if you got a job that paid you $50,000 a year, but you loved it? What would that look like? You know, it's an extra $10,000 difference in income. I understand that, but could you still live off of the income if you made 10,000 less? Maybe. And if you did, would you show up at home a better person if you loved your job than if you hated your job? Would you show up a better person for your kids, a better father, a better mother for your children if you loved your job and didn't hate it? Or at least enjoyed it? Maybe not even love it. If you just enjoyed it instead of hating it, what would that be like? You know, so many, we live in this society and we see people that are preaching hustle and pre preaching the struggle. You got to hustle, you got to struggle, you got to hustle, you got to struggle. That sounds terrible. Who wants to succeed by struggling your way to success? That sounds like it sucks. I don't know about you, but I don't want to do that. But we think that that's what it takes because that's all we see people talking about. People love to brag about the hustle. They love to brag about the struggle. You got to work your ass off. Sure, you definitely have to work hard. I won't say that you don't have to work hard, but it doesn't mean that you can't also have time with your family. Successful business does not mean no time for family. That's something that you have to realize. It sounds terrible. Most successful people, this is a funny thing, we look at it and we think, oh my gosh, in order to, to grow a successful business, I have to basically hate my life every single day. No, you don't. Most people who are successful love what they do. And the reason why they're so successful is because they love what they do and they don't mind doing it. And so they sometimes accidentally work a little bit harder and maybe they do go out of balance and work 80 hours a week for a month. And then they go way out of balance the other way. And then they go down to 30 hours a week because they work so hard for that month, but they love what they do. So they don't see any difference between them. It's literally like their business is a part of them. It's like their arm. You know, what would it look like for you to love what you do? That's what I want you to think of. What if you could make money doing something that you love? I want you to think about that because for some people, that idea is so 
for, and it's something I want you to ponder on. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, do me a favor and hit that like button down below. It helps with the YouTube algorithm so that more people can see this message because it helps us get it out organically. So hit that like button and I appreciate you. The next thing is some people will spend their last dollar for their children, which is also a beautiful thing. It's a novel idea. But what if you didn't have to spend your last dollar? What if you didn't have to spend your last? What if you had enough money to buy your children what they wanted? What would it be like for your children to say, dad, I want this. And you went, okay, no questions asked. Don't even have to ask how much it is. What would it be like for your children to say, mom, I want this new PlayStation. I don't even know what number PlayStation, five, seven, six, 12. I don't know what PlayStation number one. Mom, I want PlayStation 12. And you're like, all right, go buy it. Not how much does it cost? What would it look like for you to just be like, okay, we're gonna go get it. What would that feel like to know that you built a life to say, F it, let's go get it. How different would that make you feel? How would you feel about yourself? How would you feel about your family? How would you feel about your own success if you were the person that created that? You don't have to have an answer. I'm just asking these questions to try to shift up the foundation for what you actually think is real. Because believe me, I lived in a poverty mindset for a really long time. The idea of go ahead and get it was foreign to me for the longest time. What if you could live your life going, all right, son, go ahead and get it. All right, daughter, go ahead and get it. I don't even care how much it is. You know, maybe they turn 16 years old and you're like, I'm going to buy them a car. What would that feel like? Not, oh my gosh, they're about to turn 16. I don't know how I'm going to afford a car. What if it was just like, okay, go ahead and get it. What would that feel like? Can you lock your brain into that feeling and go, I want that feeling in real life. I want to know what that feeling feels like. What would that look like for you? What would it look like for your kids to say that they wanted something and you said, let's go get it. That's all I want you to think about. Instead of having a struggle and just pay the bills and just get by, what would it look like on the other side of that to think I could get my kids whatever it is that they want? Just something to dive into that I want you to kind of think about. And then the next thing is people don't realize what their children are missing out on by them not making more money. Here's a big thing. People have children that, they, and once again, the word jobs that they hate in order to provide for a family, and that is freaking selfless and amazing. But what if you were able to make even more money and be able to provide for your family at a really high level, and then you could travel to wherever you want to? What would your children's life look like if you could travel anywhere in the world? I remember the, when I was a kid, I remember being in like third grade. Third grade was the very first time that I ever saw a picture of the Colosseum in Rome. And I remember reading about it and learning about it and being like, that's incredible. That thing is 2000 years. And I was blown away. And I was like, if I could just go see that thing one time in my life, it would be amazing. And all I wanted to do was see the Colosseum. Imagine if your children felt the same way and you went, yeah, let's go ahead and hop on a plane next week and we're gonna go to Rome and see it. What would that be like for your children? To not look at it in a book, to not see it on the TV, but to go and experience it. To experience Italy, to experience Rome, to experience the food, to experience the people, to hear the languages, to see all the different types of people that go to that place. How much more rich would their life be? I'm not talking rich in money, rich in experiences. Would their life be if you could do that for them? Just sit on that for a little while. Just think about it. Think about what that would be like. It's possible. Everything is possible. Everything is possible. You just have to make it possible. Think about what the travel would be like. Think about what the safety could be like, right? If you don't have much money right now, you might not live in the best part of town. How much more safe could your children be if you were in a better part of town? I remember I had a coaching client not too long ago and we were speaking and his biggest fear was that his son would be shot by the time he was 13 years old because he lived in such a bad part of town. His main job was to get, his main goal in life was to make $100,000 so he could put a down payment on a house outside of where they lived because he wanted his son to be in a safer place. What would your children's life be like if you could provide them more safety? Think about that for a second. And then another thing, what would it be like if you could afford to send them to any school? What would their, how much different would their life be if you could send them to any school? 
Maybe you want to send them to a private school instead of a public school. Maybe you want to send, you know, move to a different part of town that's a better part of town that has better schools so they can get a better education. How much different would their lives be if you made more money so you could provide them a better education? How much better would their lives be if you fast forward 20 years, if you worked really hard right now and they were able to get a better education? What if they get into college and it doesn't matter what college it is, you just say, you're going. You got in, you're going. Don't care how much it is. What would that life look like for you? I understand it might be foreign for you right now, but it doesn't mean it's impossible. It's 100% possible, but you have to be the person to first believe it and then actually make it possible. That's the thing about creating stuff in your life. So think about how much richer your children's life would be. And I get it. I get it. I get it. You've got to provide. But what if you were to not quit your job today and go do something, but if you were to slowly transition over the next year or two years into what it is that you truly want to do, what it is that you're truly passionate about, what would their life look like? How much more rich would their life be and experience if you could travel where you wanted to go, if you could move to the part of town and put them in the school that you wanted to, if you could say yes to any college that they wanted to go to, how much different would their life be if you fast forward? You know, if you, if you were to go in this present moment right now and you were to work your ass off and work hard for a year, and maybe go a little bit out of balance. And working hard for a year then sets up the foundation of whatever it is you need to set up, which then allows you to give you more free time throughout the rest of your life with your children. But it also provides more income for you in some sort of way, which then allows you to be able to travel with your children where you want to, to be able to buy the house that you want, to be able to buy them the car that you want to buy them, to be able to put them in the school that you want to put them in, to be able to pay for whatever college it is. If you were to fast forward 20 years from now, what would you putting in the work and doing what you want to do do for your children's lives? I'm not talking about right now. I'm talking about over the next 20 years. What would that look like? I understand you might be locked in a job right now, but what if you were to make a two-year plan to transition out of it and to start building your e-commerce business, start building your Amazon business, start building your coaching business, start building your real estate business, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be right now, but what if you were to be able to transition and have, I'm going to have my two-year plan. I'm going to have my three-year plan to transition out of this to finally give my children and my family the life that they want. Think about that because you either sacrifice now or you sacrifice later. What sacrifice do you want? There's two types of hard, right? Like hard work to be successful. Sometimes it does require some hard work, a little bit out of balance every once in a while. You could either be, you know, working hard and put the hard work in there. Hard work is hard. Being broke is hard as well. But you are the person who gets to choose which hard that it is that you want to choose. Either it's hard work or it happens to be the hard feeling of being broke because some people go broke for their kids, but they won't get rich for them. What would your life look like if you decided to get rich for your kids? Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. Because let's be real, if you don't figure out how to get past the fear in your head that's holding you back from the life that you want, then you're going to have to stay in the place of mediocrity that you're in.